shepherds one night. And, uh, we'll be out in the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you for what we've already heard and failed in this house tonight. His goodness, His mercy to us. It's been good to be today, Brother Gary, and I appreciate you, Mike. Oh, how that uh, last night, just how the presence of the Lord came in the house. And, uh, just great, it was the great touch of His power. I, I, I tell Him His presence is invaluable, but in His presence, sometimes He'll let us feel His power. Amen. And I'm glad when the power comes with the presence. Say, you. See Brother Gary last night running through here, shouting, getting in. looks so good. I love, love what we seen, love what, what we felt, what we heard. He did. Amen. It's so good. Appreciate all the brothers that's come to help us uh, throughout the revival. I, I'll be honest with you, I, I, you know, I, I try to fill it out every night to see the will of the Lord. And, and, and it seemed like his spirit has showed up every single night. Every night. Amen. Amen. The book of James tonight, the fourth chapter. Uh, Brother Kenny was talking how these people out there that that want to want to hurt people, don't want to see people do good. Sister Judy, and I tell you, I, I don't want to ever be that kind of man. I aim to try to not be that kind of man. You know, uh, I'll share this with you while you're turning to James chapter four. I know some of you still turning with us. Uh, but uh, I thought one time, Brother Gary, and you mentioned it this week, how the Lord will send us Amen. places sometimes Amen. that is not in our familiar territory. Amen. And there's times that we'll have to go places that others wouldn't be willing to go. Amen. And when I go, I want to go with a good spirit about it. I want to help somebody. Amen. But Gary, I'll never forget this. I was at a place preaching down in the south. And... Uh, there was some people come from a, uh, from a, 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 a First Baptist church. It's First Baptist, a big church from another county. And uh, that night I was preaching holiness. And, and I did not realize who was in that crowd. Didn't, went and didn't scope the crowd. Didn't see who come through the door so I could preach on them and pick on what they was wearing. But uh, what I didn't know, they sat right there wearing some of the things I was preaching on. I thought, Lord, I've hurt that poor little woman. She'll never come back to a holiness church. I, 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 I'll be honest with you, it bothered me. I went to bed that night, bothered. But you know, she come back out the next night and looked different than she came. I come back home, and uh, they called us and said, this is pastor from the first, well, maybe it's one of his deacons, one of his guys that does the calling for him, from this first Baptist church, big old church, said, we'd love to have you come and preach us a revival. And I thought, now, Lord, did they call the right guy? Yeah. That this is the same guy that come and heard, you know. And uh, but sometimes, Brother Joe, God knows what I don't know. And I went gladly with him. And I had the hard, one of the hardest times preaching. A very organized church, part of the uh, S SBC, you know, and, and it was very difficult to preach there. Some of the people kept saying, quit holding back, Charlie. Some of the homeless folks that come and visit said, quit holding back. I thought, you can you make my shoes up here looking back through there. And, uh, but you know, the Friday night, the Lord helped us and they wanted us to share a pulpit with a man and he preached first and we preached next and the Saturday we preached and looked down and one of the leaders of the church was asleep and you know, trying so hard to preach. But that Sunday morning, uh, and they were enjoying it, but I, I knew that they, I was waiting on something to come by and help me. And Brother Joe, uh, they had done their Sunday school. I went to their Sunday school that morning and they didn't do it in the sanctuary. They had a whole lot of faculty and people. So they sent Papa back to a room with a bunch of older men and Mamma back to a room with a bunch of older women and me back to a room with a bunch of teenagers. And we sat there and I was just trying to make it to that service time, you know, to start. Worship yeah. service time started. And uh, the pastor come and he leaned his yeah. head in the door. And he said, Charlie, when they get done in here, come to my office. And I thought, you know, that's a strange thing to be told. And so I made my way down the little hallway and made my way into the foyer and sanctuary over here. I went into that office. And uh, when I went in, he was listening to a man that had worked among us, worked among your people, Brother Vernon, and knew your people well. And I said, you listen to that guy? He said, yeah, I do. He said, I love to hear that kind of singing and like you all do. Brother Gary said, sit down. And I sat on that sofa. He was behind his desk. And uh, Sister Lindy looked across that desk and he said, Charlie, my brother is part of the 16th council in 
a big organization said he's uh, over the state of Nebraska, over the state of North Dakota, South Dakota, them three states, and said, I tell him sometimes, brother, to his brother, told, told his brother, he said, whatever you do, don't forget where you and I come from. Uh, whatever you do, don't forget where we started. Uh, I thought, what's he saying? He said, Charlie, my mama was a holiness woman. Uh, and said, she, she dressed this thing just right. He said, she'd shout and the pins would bust out of her hair and her hair would go right to the ground and touch the ground. Said she wouldn't even allow a TV in her home and I'm not bashing you if you do. I'm telling you what he told me about his grandmother. I'm not, I'm not bashing nobody. I'm telling you what he told me. And he looked across that table at me and he said, Charlie, we have lost some things. He said, I have lost some things. And I said, God, now I know why I'm over here in this big old Baptist church. And that morning I let it cut loose. <laughs> that night I come back, let it cut loose, the crowd was off. Oh, yeah, a big old crowd Sunday morning. And it wouldn't be to come back to hear me Sunday night. But oh, I was a shouting by that time, feeling the good Holy Ghost. And that pastor was enjoying himself. I'd love today to have a good spirit to help somebody, wouldn't you? Amen. I didn't, I didn't bring no club with me when I went down there. But when we left that night, amen, they, they never did invite us back. They said if the organization would have knew what he allowed to go on in his church that weekend, they'd have removed him. But you know what, Brother Vernon? I enjoyed myself, and they enjoyed themselves. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought, my, my, Lord, you knew before I knew. He so he knows, don't he? He knows. And yeah. Look at James, the fourth chapter, the 13th verse. It said, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time, and then it vanisheth away. For that you ought to say that the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boastings, and all such rejoicing is evil. Therefore to heal, and this is what gets me. This is what gets you, no doubt, many a time. Therefore, to him that know it to do good and doth it not, what is it? Sin. To him it is sin. sin. I thought tonight uh, we we're just going to preach for a few moments, try not to hold you real long. But you know tonight uh, I read this scripture and it said, go tell them uh, that you hear saying, uh, tomorrow we're going to go to a city and we're going to buy and we're going to sell and we're going to get gain. You know, we're in a time right now that people, I mean, just like the scripture said, they suppose that gain means godliness. But you know today I found Brother Doug and they some in this life that means more than my bank account. They something in this life that I feel means more than what I pulled up in this driveway in. I'm telling you today, friend, what's going to matter in this life is what you and I have with God. I mean, that's what really means the most today. But he said, you go tell them to say, we're going into a city and going to buy and sell and get gain. You don't know what's coming tomorrow. I mean, he said, what is your life? But it's even a vapor uh, that appeared for a little while and then it vanished the way. Glory to God. And, you know, I've been feeling this on our heart today. And we're in a time right now, like they say it earlier, uh, there's so many distractions and that enemy's trying to get people's minds and he wants to hinder God's people. Amen. I'm talking right down to the very elect. Uh, uh, he wants to hinder. Uh, but Brother Kenny, it rolled over in my heart today. We don't have much time left. Uh, there's not much time left. Uh, and I'd love to redeem the time that I have uh, and use it wisely. Uh, and use it for him. Uh, not to use it, Brother Batman, uh, to complain about this. Uh, what the people wants to do. They'll preach a message. They'll sing a song. That one will come sit over here, Brother David. Sit down a while. <laughs> come on now. They want to sit down a while. And sometimes I'll even be giving him one to nuzzle up to Devin or, you know, just using him as a, so maybe out here and say, Charlie, you're doing good. But friends, sometimes we need to get it in our mind. It don't matter about the pat on the back. I just want to do the will of God. And at the end of the day, I'm going to 
profitable sermon, but I want to please him. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It went down well the Lord. Yeah. Jeroboam fought against him. Yeah. He saw God was on his side, that prophet did. God withered his hand. Yeah. Withered Jeroboam's hand. Yeah. And then Christian the Lord used Jeroboam to heal that man's hand. Yeah. Great king. Great, great status. Yeah. Jeroboam went from wanting to kill him, wanting to invite him home for supper. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And that yeah. little yeah. prophet yeah. said, I don't have no time to waste. Yeah. Now I will tell you something. Yeah. He'd already received the spoken word of the Lord. That's yeah. word. It wouldn't matter at that point if an angel had showed up. He shouldn't listen to nothing else but that to spoke. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard people say, Brother Kenny. I know what the Bible says, but God told me, I'm telling you, if it don't line up with this, it was, not it was enough spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel the Holy Ghost. That's, that's another spirit. We've seen that in a good time. Brother Gary, you've seen that happen. I've seen that happen before, Brother King. He done the right thing. He told Jeroboam, I, I don't care to go home and eat with the king. Hit it off down the road. You want to hear what we, we, we often skip to that lying prophet yeah. who saddled up an ass for his sons and sent them after him to say, our father's a prophet just like you. He said to come back home and eat. We want to skip that. They had never caught him. <coughs> I said they had never caught him. No. If they wouldn't have found him under the oak. <coughs> come on. But Brother Devin, what he wanted to do, sit down under that oak and rest a little while. And he said, he'll be caught up with me. I'll tell you today. Even when this survival's over, when I go home, I do not want to sit down under the oak. Can begin to listen to the Glory to God. Have you ever been in the Lord God used you greatly? And then you sat down under the oak and got weary. And who called up with you? It was our enemy. Oh, Lord. But I want to turn a deaf when I see him coming. I want to turn a deaf ear to him. I don't want to listen. But what he has to say, glory to God. But Gary, here he comes. He said, I'm a prophet just like you. And it cost that man his soul. When he went back home with that prophet, eat at his table. But what got him before the false prophet came? He knew what to do. And he didn't do it. You ever seen people say, if God would just let me know what to do? Get out of the valley I'm in. I'd do it. But honey, it's set over on your coffee table. He'd draw your name in the dust. Just go get it. Come on now. I'm not preaching hard. I. I'm not preaching hard. I'm preaching just, just, just sound doctrine. We want to hear what God wants us to do to get out of the plate. Have you ever been there? Where you played that game? Let me reach me a Bible over there, brother. Amen. Where you played that game, you walked through the house, and you said, I need to hear from the Lord. Lord, wherever I open to. That's why. But you know what? I want to tell you. Uh, there was one man said that, and he opened the Bible, and it said, that, in other words, do what you do quickly. It's talking about killing a man. I'm going to tell you sometime, you can't afford to play with your soul. I'm you, if Brother Doug will come touch me on my shoulder, then I know God's moved on me. But honey, there's a way you can fast and pray. You don't have to play games with God. You can have confidence in that that's moving on you. If I make it sense to that, I don't want to waste no time. Don't want to waste no time. I want to redeem the well. I don't want to wear, weary you. I felt, I felt the Spirit of the Lord and what was the same. I don't want, don't want to weary the people. We want to use wisdom. Our wonderful thanks tonight. Folks, I'm telling you. You and I are in a time right now. But let me... Uh, Brother Devin, if you have your Bible, let's turn to the book of Jude. Let me read this to you. Yeah, we'll try not to rush too much. We'll just try to get out of the way with the Lord's finish. And I'll tell you this. The devil will tell you a lot of things. But Brother Gary, anybody that knows me, they know I'm the kind of man. I don't leave her around when it comes to revival. God sends me for three days. I'm three days and gone. But sometimes God will let us linger. I hope you ain't felt like I've wearied you or wasted your time. I know this past couple of nights we went... We went longer than a week. 
And I tell you, the Lord really told me to go. To this time, to this time, he's moving on me to go. That's what I want to do. I don't want to go no more, no less than what he had me to go. But I'm telling you, up to this point right here, that man has moved on me. And the enemy fought me, said, now you know that man right there, Bobby. He's tired. He's got things going on. But I'm telling you today, I looked at Brother Gary last night, running around his head. That's what our people need. That'll reach in the heart, heal these wounds. And these people come in and say, Lord, I'm telling you, the Lord dealt with me about this all back. We've got people slipping away. I, I, please don't take me wrong. I, I, I'm not that kind of man to be hard. I'm not, and I'm, not, I'm, I'm not out to be. But Brother Joe, if I come pray for you every service, that's good. You need prayer, no doubt. If I come, but these people sit back there saying, God, baby, please hear my cry. If you can hear my cry. I want to get a hold of something that will reach back to the people and help God's little people. Come on. Help God's children. I want you to read this. This is what you and I. Time's, time, time's ticking away, folks. Yeah. Go to Jude chapter, uh, well, one, chapter 1, verse 20, and read down to the last verse. This right here is what we're commissioned to do. Now, I'm telling you, it's slipping away from us. Read this, Brother Devin. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. Building up yourselves on the name? No. Building up yourselves on somebody else's testimony? No. But on your most holy faith. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus. Come on now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Keep yourselves in the love of God. I'm going to tell you, you can do what you want to do. You can jump the pews, you can swing back and forth from the chandeliers. But if you ain't got the love of God working in what you're doing, it ain't going to bail up. We got people dying lost every day. And you know what's going to do the work? Love will do the work. I don't say that God has given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. we got people that need to be reconciled to God. I don't want to be them on down in the place they're in, but I'd love to stretch out my hand and say, can you grab a hold of my hand? Let's pull together. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Brother Gary, you and I have known each other since I was a little boy. You know me my bus driver. Huh? But I tell you this week, I, I, mean, I love to come up here. I had it on my mind for a while. God finally moved on me to come up. Uh, Brother Gary, you know what I mean? Me and you did. I mean, we pulled pull it together. Glory to God. You love me. I'm telling you, I look around here tonight, and I mean this. I don't see anything in between me and any of you. That's why the Spirit can move freely. That's why God's moved. We've got one mind. Glory. Love lifted me. When all else fell, love lifted me. You know what we need? In the house of God, the love of God. Glory to God. I thought about Jeff the other night. Sit back on that back here. He may not have prayed. He could not leave Little Creek God and say he didn't feel loved. I love that about God's children. I love that about God's children. Did you feel that love move? It will do the work. Amen. Brother Devin, I apologize for interrupting you. Read on. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. And it will make a difference. Somebody said, what can I do, Brother King, to make a difference? Well, I'm going to tell you. Hey, man, just have a little compassion. Show a little love. It'll make a great difference in a person's life. Glory to God. Hey, man, you know what, Melinda? You're here tonight because somebody showed you love. You're here tonight, Sister Kim, because somebody showed you love. And I'd like to tell you today, Sister Kim, we're in a time right now. People said there is no more love in the house of God. I don't know who I don't know who said that. They lie. They still love. I come on, just give it a little while. They still love among the people of God. Amen. It will make the difference. Somebody said compassion don't get the work done. I'm telling you it won't heal necessarily. 
I can't, I can't come break the bond off you with compassion, but I tell you, it'll make a difference. I got the book. It'll make a difference. Amen. We'll let you finish. Another saint with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted, spotted by the flesh. That's what I wanted him to read right there. Thank you. Amen. Reaching into that fire. You know what I found? We're in town right now. There's too many people afraid of getting burned. I've got to be honest with you. And you may say, here you go in one of your soapboxes. You'll fit in that soapbox for a little while, I guess. But God really dealt with me on this. We come to church, maybe 15 sinners. Anybody got a song. Look at one another. You ever been guilty of that? 15 preachers. 20 preachers. And next many churches out there saying, God, we need help. I've been there where I was guilty. Anybody got a message? Uh, you know what I'm afraid? We're in a time right now. A lot of people just want that label. That's all that matters to them. If they can get a label, I, th I feel like they think they made it. <laughs> that label's going to burn off and hell. Come on now. Somebody said, does it matter on the side over the door? I said, no, because the side's going to burn in a little while. You better get it right down in your heart. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. You get it in your heart, you'll be holy. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you today what we what we got too much of. People that's afraid to reach out in the fire. But Amy, I'd love to take my hand. What if I get burnt, preacher? I'd love to get burnt trying to reach you. Amen. 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 Glory to God. When the Lord told me to go see that man, Brother Joe. And I went to his house. I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to go. The other man that got down with me about was a lot easier to talk to. I almost went by the other man's house. I'm glad I didn't, Brother Kenny. God let me preach that man his last message. Just a few weeks later, they done created that man. I'm telling you today, reach in the fire. Reach in the fire. Ain't much time left. Well, hallelujah. Glory to God. I went down there a lot of God used to shouting. I've got that help me. Want to push a little more. I'm telling you today, folks, we're getting distracted with too many things. I'd love today to reach out in that fire. Get it again. So he tried to weary you. I tell you tonight, we're running out of time. They talk about falling, people are falling. I won't be that kind of person. I'll stick my hand out. Say, let me help you. This morning I was aggravated, Brother Vernon. Me and Natalie had to run down the road. I was going down that hill. Next thing I knew, my feet from right under me, and I was laying on that ground. Shoulder hurting. Still hurting. Um, Natalie's standing over top of me saying stuff. I said, go to the car, go to the car. <laughs> I'll get back up, be honest with you. Um, we got hurt people. Right. You get next to them and they feel them wound. You feel them. You can feel them deep down. They won't help, but it seemed like they're pushing you away. Yes. Brother Kenny, I'd love to be that kind of man to get right down there with you. Yes. I remember when, when, when I got put in the hospital, it was right at COVID. Right at COVID, when, when COVID first started coming into America. And I thought, how that, uh, that it really hadn't spread here yet. I believe in my heart that's what I had, Brother, Brother Gary. I got so sick. You know, you just. They put me in the hospital. You don't hear of any 18-year-old me and 19-year-old me getting put in the hospital over breathing. But whatever that was I got was terrible. And it caused that asthma to flare up. And, yeah. and uh, but you know, I thought one night there was a lot of people that, that could have tasted. I was sitting there feeling sorry for myself. Yeah. Nobody texted to tell me that's brain for yeah. Kind of feeling baby five, huh? yeah. I think we need to quit being some baby five. Yeah. Like Brother Jason said, get sanctified. Then we'll back but I'll be honest with you, it was wearing on my mind a little bit. I thought, well, I'm just praying for sick people. Like, but you know what? It wasn't a preacher. It wasn't a prophet. But Tom Hilton's boy, Jerry, come walking through that door. He wrapped me up. He didn't care what I had. He would reach right down that bed and wrap me up and pull me up to him. As pale as a ghost. I started crying. Praying for him. We got too many people that's afraid of getting their hands dirty. Yeah. I've heard them say, don't go. Don't go down the road over there and preach or down the road. There's a mess down there. There's a mess. Yeah. I'd love to go and get right down with them. Folks, they're very they say, let's push a little. Uh, 
Yeah. You ever had a dinner, brother Gary? You like 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 I said, I, like Brother Kenny said, I, I, you tell people's tired tonight. I, 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 I'm the kind of man I can preach on with what I feel that I want to use wisdom and tell them.